now like to invite Carla Sharp, who's from the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory, who's going to perhaps have a more regional continental focus on, on how space science is really preparing Africa for the knowledge economy of the future. So Carla, over to you. I should say Carla has had a, a long career in space in South Africa, and, and she's currently targeting, um, heading the Africa Partnership Program, which is preparing the Africa partner nations for their future uh, role as host nations in later phases of the Square Kilometre Array. Carla, please. Hi there, thank you, Don. Um, so, as mentioned in the previous talks, uh, radio astronomy projects and particularly mega projects of the size are not just about science, um, although that is their primary focus. They are massive engineering projects, uh, require enormous amounts of data skills, and that's the data pipeline from uh, st storing data, transferring data, and then being able to analyze that data. And of course, um, the need for scientists, economists, and various uh, skill sets. So through our process over the last decade in South Africa, um, in developing our precursor instrument, we started with CAT7. This was an engineering prototype, and I include it here. Um, I'll bring it up again later. And of course, Meerkat, our precursor that is now operational. Um, the 64 dishes were inaugurated in 2018, and this was our first image of the Galactic Center. Um, sustainability in Africa in particular um, requires collaboration in science, and there are a few factors we've identified that make these programs successful, and it's not just about um, a great instrument um, and doing good science. Um, we also need the HCD and skills development where partnerships with DARA have been um, very necessary and very successful. Um, a challenge we faced with um, our development in Africa is the long-term operational sustainability of these sites and further developing R&D, um, attractiveness to partnerships, and then how do we work into industrial development and innovation uh, these contribute to sustainability and although there are many benefits to radio astronomy, it can be challenging to address industry development. So as mentioned, um, the SKA data pipeline, which is far in excess of what Meerkat is currently, but the Meerkat pipeline is still big. Um, we generate enough data that's equivalent to watching five and a half thousand uh, digital t t TV channels at the same time. And um, Meerkat is also a unique instrument in that it has an, an open design. So it's a multicast telescope. It can uh, produce more than one science objective at the same time. Our site is also allowed for the hosting of guest instruments such as HERA. And this is useful as these site collaborations and guest instruments are opening opportunities to our African partners as well. So when we talk about our African partners, we're talking about the AVN network. So this is the development of the African uh, VLBI network and our partner countries are listed here. Um, we have completed the first uh, of these uh, VLBI dishes in Ghana. We recommissioned an old telescope, uh, telecoms dish. So in some countries, there's the requirement to refurbish old dishes, and in other countries, there'll be the requirement for new dishes. Um, the objectives of the AVN ultimately are readiness for participation in later phases of SKA. But um, in beginning to implement this program, we've seen the significant need for knowledge transfer and skills development and other science collaborations in order to grow uh, the capacity in these countries. No country wants a telescope that its own scientists can't use. Um, and that requires a pipeline. That's something that South Africa has uh, been very successful at. Over the last decade, um, we've trained over 
I think nearly 1,300 uh, bursaries have been provided. And we've trained in skill sets from artisans that would be precision welding all the way through to PhDs, developing a pipeline of scientists. And this program has been extended to our partner program. And uh, so we are developing that pipeline. One challenge that is worth noting though, is in the African countries, training can happen, but where do you put these graduates? And that is a challenge that we need to address um, in the longer term, is developing the institutions and the opportunities once we've completed these training programs. So the challenge, as I say, in our partner countries is not only operational um, ability in the long term, but it can be as simple as electricity supply and uh, internet supply to these sites. Um, where does the data get stored? Um, I've mentioned scientific capacity, the internal governance structures, uh, structures and funding. So in order to dr address this um, and to derive benefit like Meerkat has, where we focused on localization, so that's growing local industry and capacity, innovation, in developing the technologies that we needed that maybe were not available at the time. And so we've strived to translate our research into utility, which has been very successful in South Africa and which we would hope to rec uh, replicate, maybe not necessarily on the same scale, but in our partner countries. Um, our economic benefits, I like to summarize as direct impact, that is, uh, employing people, this, the very easy impacts that we measure. Um, decreasing the skills gap. This is our impact in human capital de development at all levels. And infrastructure-led growth. So although we developed telescope infrastructure, we also had to tar 80 kilometers of road, implement 110 kilometers of power lines, upgrade substations. And so in the area around the telescope, and there was a lot of public infrastructure development. I mentioned our human capital development. Here's just a, a graph. So of the 100, and, I mean, of the 1,050 uh, bursaries awarded by the end of 2018, 135 of those had gone to our partner countries in Africa. We focus on technology development, as I mentioned. A number of the technologies we've had to develop for the telescope have um, a big impact across other sectors and certainly would be very useful in our partner countries. I won't go into detail for time, but I'm happy to share that information with you. And so with all I've said to this point, we came up with a proposal to generate sustainability and growth in our partner countries. And we call this the co-location proposal. So if we take the sites in our partner countries that are expected to host uh, radio astronomy instrumentation. Um, we've proposed that we co-locate other science projects, such as I mentioned guest instruments like HERA and satellite ground stations, uh, receiving ground stations. This is an important aspect because it allows for the generation of uh, information from satellite data to help these countries address their national goals but also it allows for the generation of revenue on these sites. Um, that contributes to the ongoing operations. It allows for training, collaborations with industry partners, and the skill sets required to operate and maintain a radio astronomy dish are very similar to those required to do so for a satellite ground station. So there's skills transfer, training, et cetera. Um, with the installation of data facilities on, the site, on these sites and um, in local universities. Uh, we now develop uh, training on satellite data, training on radio astronomy data, and as mentioned previously, these are cross-cutting cross and can be uh, utilized in many fields to address many of the development goals. Um, through this, we drive industry partnership, but also innovation. There are many applications that have been developed by many young bright people out of access to data and the ability to uh, manipulate data. So why space? Uh, just to point out that 
in astronomy, we, and all areas of astronomy, we tend to be at, on Earth, looking up at space to do science. Whereas the business of space happens from space, looking back down at Earth. Uh, just an example, uh, the recent uh, cyclone damage that happened in uh, a year and a half ago in Mozambique. This is what uh, the picture that's faced by people on the ground, but with satellite data, they can see immediately where damage has happened, how to get people, you know, bridges that have been lost, uh, where there is or isn't access. So satellite data in disaster management, agriculture, water, I mean, the list is very long in how it impacts our countries. So the co-location program is looking to address human capital development and skills development, um, a network of African technology infrastructure and industry development and generating revenue. So each site can host almost a shopping list of um, items, data processing, ground stations, science instruments, and various uh, technologies I won't go into that we've, gen that we've developed within uh, Soraya work in South Africa on Meerkat. And hopefully we can do this to provide sustainable revenue, employment opportunities, and value added data solutions. Um, and we do this in partnership with DARA, Doppler, and the real goal is a combined effort uh, to grow African potential. Thank you. Thank you.